So hi everyone, in today's video, I have something very special for you guys. If you notice, I'm in a different set today because we have a very, very special guest and we are gonna be talking about a software that I believe might or will revolutionize the way you are editing your photographs. Now, if you wanna learn more about this particular software without the demo, you could always check out the video that came before this in the channel of a very good friend of mine, Nico Valenzuela. So, Today we have in the studio, well, Altspace Studio here in Quezon City in the Philippines, we have a very special guest, Mr. Elia Locardi. Yes. Yeah. So Elia here has been talking about a software. He's actually here in the Philippines for Photo World Asia, which is the biggest event that we have every January. I'm and still tired. I'm still tired <laughs> because it was a very, very, very long weekend. And this is the best way to cap it off, to oh, be honest. For sure. Thank you very for sure. much for making time. And it is the first time I'm actually doing this type of video here in the channel. And we got to talking and he was telling me about this particular software because he got invited for, to talk about AI. Yeah, so I've been, it, no, it's so yeah. weird, <laughs> yeah. but I, I have been imaging and AI have been in my life for five years. So I actually pitched them on the idea of combining it and they wanted to, they were, already planning on it so it kind of worked out oh, fantastic um but what's really interesting is uh at photo world too we have traditional and new school you know people who just use instagram whatever there's still that distance between ai right so this word too they they kind of strung it out and made it feel like it was more artistry and imagination yes. was AI. Yes. Because we're still kind of afraid to distance, or the one yeah. to distance. Does that make sense? They were well, being careful. It was like what? a careful, we're <laughs> yeah. not, it's not all about AI. Don't get, don't, don't go, you know, don't get scared. It's still about photography. You know what, to be, to be honest though, I do believe that the, my viewers are actually accustomed to AI based software. Sure. And I think they've already accepted it because it just makes life a lot easier. We're gonna be talking about Radiant Photo and what is Radiant Photo? Let me be the one to explain it because yeah, I wanna so make it as simple as I possible. I like this because you really haven't used it. Right? I haven't. Like, like you couldn't even figure out how to open it. That it was, was like, the this, where's Radiant Photo? To something that he yeah, hasn't. I, think I haven't <laughs> used it. I, I haven't. I know. Because I it's wanted so I wanted everything to be as authentic as possible because I have been using some yeah, AI based is, software that I'm happy for, I'm happy with. I'm happy about this. And, and just to let, let you guys know that, that he hasn't really used it. He knows <laughs> it'll do something, but. Uh, in my presentations, I started just not looking at the images I was going to demo before and just asking people to give me images because it, it, exactly. it worked. Yeah, I know it's not going to destroy it. you know it. how prepared we were for this video? I didn't even bring any images, so whatever's in my <laughs> laptop is what we're putting in, right? So, <laughs> Gee, he, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, of course. <laughs> he, goes to, he goes to me, do you have any raw files? Uh, I think so. So I wasn't even sure what I had in the computer. But what, what does this software do? What does Radiant Photo do? Uh, well, I mean, it, it's a photo editor. It's a photo it, yep, editor. It does not create pixels. Okay. It can enhance them. It's fully 16-bit. All right. You'll never see a halo. You'll never see an edge of a mask or anything. It can maintain perfect color structure throughout editing, and it attempts to pre-balance your images before you even start editing them. But okay. our raw conversion stuff is coming <laughs> in a couple months. All right. So... so well, what is the difference? Okay, just to make it simpler for everyone to understand what we're trying to do here or what I'm going to try to do. My process would be I'll choose photos, I'll cull them in a separate software, put them in a chosen folder. Then I do what I call my raw conversion software in, in Capture One mm -hmm. for color grading. Then I will bring it to another AI-based software for skin retouching. Then my final tweaking in Photoshop. What this one does, Radiant Photo, from my understanding, is that it will replace my starting point after I've chosen the photos. Exactly, and it does read raw. I want to be very specific, but okay. we don't, it doesn't have a raw develop module. So if your computer can read raw, uh, Windows or Mac, then it does okay, read raw. Okay, now yeah. I get it, I get it. But so it's when not you, embedded in software. What you're seeing on the interface here is not highlight shadows, midtones, and everything. Yes. So it will read the file, open the file, would be fine. Okay. But we don't, you know, actively make sure we I'm can so, read them. I'm actually so excited. So I'm like, I'm, I'm it, reading his lips, but I'm not really listening because I'm just so excited. <laughs> just to try start. This, you, this is weird. <laughs> okay. I just think the best, way, the best way is to just really use it. I'll tell you right? what, I, I've been explaining this and you don't understand anyway. So here's what you do. Yeah. It's a visual test. Okay. You open the, some photos yeah, exactly. and if it looks good, 
Cool. That's why. That's why. <laughs> and, and the best thing about it is, let's see how fast it will actually do it. Yeah. How what could possibly be. go wrong? I know. <laughs> All right. So we open the files. So I've actually chosen this folder because it was shot with different cameras. So I won't mention the camera brands, but it was shot with different cameras. So let's open it up. That's about 60 photos. Oh, by the way, this is not a cloud-based software. You download it and you install it in your computer so you can work with it offline. Yeah, it's uh, you buy it, you oh, own cloud. it. You don't have to you upload said, to the cloud. <laughs> Wait, you I just said, said way some... too much because know, it's because already it's done. done. Okay. Oh, yeah. So the, remember, the, these are like full raw files. They're 14-bit, the, not 16. They're 14-bit. 16, 16, but, but but this. So what's interesting about this is it opened it and edited it faster than Photoshop can open it. No, it, it opened That's it and true. edited it. That's By true. the time I said something, it was done. You turned around and it was done. I know. Yeah. So what, what basically happened? So what basically happened here is that AI analyzed the photographs. Then it, what did it do? It, on the left there under smart presets, it detected that it's a landscape, right? So okay. there's a scene detection that Wait, happens. Let me check. Oh, there. See, it shifted to people. Yeah. All right. So this so, okay, is... Uh, okay, there we go. Okay, there we go. That's the first thing it okay. did. And then um, it knows what it is. It doesn't have to know what it is to fix pixels, but... By the way, guys, I haven't done anything. I haven't touched anything. You'll notice yeah. that the settings are tuned for landscapes. For people, obviously, there are different settings that you want to start with. But at first, it will attempt to detect and know what the scene is before it applies the settings to it. And we haven't done anything. No, you I haven't, haven't done anything. I haven't touched anything except import the photos. Yeah, it can either be the, you know, the end result, like you're finished now, or you're just getting started. So That's this true. was the original raw file here, mm -hmm. this one. And of course, raw files are naturally under, well, they're not underexposed, but they're normally flat. Saturation is a bit low. Contrast is a bit low because it's supposed to be edited. Because if I'm, not, if I'm not mistaken, Nico knows this for sure, but raw files are not really an image file, correct? Yeah. It's they're they're, not, it, they're it's, basically it's light. just... It's light recording. It, exactly. So it's up to us to put in the settings that we would actually yeah. want to create a final image. But what this particular software did was analyze the fact that it was a landscape mm -hmm. and put in what it thinks should be the proper exposure and proper color. More than that, but yes. More or less. Yeah. There's, yeah. Some, oh, there's like 20 years of science and research of course, on, of course, on color sure. structure, you but know, yes. Th that's the nice thing about it. They did the research. They they put in the 20 years or somebody put in the 20 years, and here we are benefiting from whatever this is it is that yeah. they're well, doing. This right? stuff is that you, don't, you shouldn't have to think we, about we don't it even that level. To, that, that's the whole point, <laughs> because why are we going to... Try this software if we even have to so, think about it. And so, we yes. do this on our site, right? Like you can try it right on the site. If you like it, you know what it's going to do before you buy it. So if you start going through the images. So now, if you notice, this is the processed photo already by Radiant Photo. Yeah, and just real quick. Now, it, it did expose correctly, but change the exposure slider. Just just move there it. There you go. Mm -hmm. No, like more, 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 more. Oh, more. here to the right. Yeah, see if you can go all the way. Notice that you, you did definitely made an image that doesn't look as good. Oh, yeah. But as you change the exposure, it's now at 150. You didn't adjust anything that was a highlight. And there's nothing being destroyed in the highlight. So when you change the exposure, it communicates with the AI because the AI knows where the edges are. But so you know what, what? This sorry, sorry. Alaya, you're looking at the TV, but if you look at the screen, it's oh, not so really? bad. Yeah. Oh, really? Okay, yeah. well, that's really if interesting. Look, yeah, if you look at the screen here. Okay, that's how it should look. That's really funny, yeah. guys. Like, it, it, this is a it's television so screen. Yeah, it's so controlled. But the, what they're seeing is this one. That's What they're cool. seeing right now is this one. Oh. Yeah, because we were also recording that. It's so cool. Even if you pushed it so much, to it's the still end. so controlled. You didn't blow out anything, and it, the colors are correct. Yep, and we can do that later, too, if you want to. If you zoom in on like the edges, um, you'll notice. Okay, how do you zoom in? Just see, I haven't pinch even, and zoom. I, I really haven't. Oh, we we put the same okay, gestures. Okay, okay, so okay. now, as you change it, look at the edges and see if there's an issue because you don't have uh, with masking. You can't do this because of anti-aliasing, oh, because yeah? of shadow pixels. Um, so it calculates for all that and doesn't create any edges. So the edge between the correction, the sky, and the foreground in this case is not compromised. This is so it cool. stays intact. This is so easy to use, and we're just doing one photo. <laughs> I love I this. You yeah, haven't I, even switched no, photos I, no, yet. I haven't even switched <laughs> photos. And what was the initial settings? I don't even remember. Was it that I uh, just hit detect on the side there, on the left side. Is where? Do you see where it says detect? Just, oh, yeah, you can here. just click landscape, yeah. and it'll read. Yep, yeah. that was it. So that's the original one. Then, of course, you could 
that's a beautiful thing about AI. AI will give you suggestions, but they're not in control. Photographers are still going to be in control of the software, and we can tweak it the way we want to. I always to. say that you're going right? to change it a little. Yeah, of course, no. you got to tweak it. it yeah. has to be. The photographers will always have to do something. But think about like <laughs> if you're in a raw editor and you change the exposure and every it blows out all the highlights. Like this why? This is amazing. Actually, the, the, if I click on this one, it shifts to people. But this one's easy because it should be okay. Let's check it out. So I want to simplify the, oh, the, no. the understanding here. It's like, it's still global editing, but you're doing it it's in pixel individual by pixel. pixels. Yeah, it, yeah, it's the software knows the pixels, so it's, it's doing the global, yeah. it's a global slider that's affecting everything, each uh -huh. pixel individually. Yes, right? so, and it's, it's kind of like um, applying all the, uh, like a railing on certain things in the interest of maintaining we've, skin tone. We've and, done that, yeah. yeah. So there, that you can basically think about it like smoothing the edges of a curve. Yeah. So that it, yeah. So these are pure edits rather than just enhance, enhance, enhance. Yeah. Because instead of enhancing, <laughs> so we're trying to maintain colors. It's easy to push them somewhere else, uh -huh. but it's harder to say, I want to change this, but I still want it to stay the same green. Precisely, precisely. That's, that's In my head, it's like uh, putting those railings on the gutter of a bowling alley so you don't miss <laughs> the, the guardrails. Yeah. Yeah. There's some guardrails here, yeah. but there's a lot of like complex, like all the things that you, you hear about, luminosity masking, frequency separation, that's all happening under the hood, right? Like yeah. it's doing all the things, but it's just not making you think about them, right? Can I, can I say something? I, I don't know how you would take this, right? But you definitely say okay, it. Okay, so see, I'm, I'm setting you up for something. <laughs> All right. You know how it is when you, when you finish editing everything in your laptop? You're like, oh, wow, perfect, beautiful. I love it. I love the contrast. I love everything. Then I put it on my phone. Then the moment I put it on my phone, I'm like, I press auto enhance in my phone. And it just does something, and it just creates an even better image. Right? Well, I'm glad you asked, because we have a mobile app, too. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but, but before that, before that, my problem with that one is that, of course, these are the low-res files. So now, what I'm seeing in my phone, I'm trying to replicate again in my, in my computer. But what it's doing here is technically giving me my auto-enhance and this is exactly how it would probably look yeah. if I did that. So all the times that we we shoot something with our iPhone next to our expensive yeah. camera yeah, so yeah. it'll look normal. Yes. Yeah. You're so, seeing this in in real time. Yes. And so now you're seeing you it's doing it in my high res files. Yeah, it's it was an interesting thing to make it full 16 bit is, you know, non-destructive pixels as possible and, just and like fast. That. Yeah, and that. just like that. Look at that. And yeah. the level of consistency, I'll probably, if I go through all these images, most likely the software detected the proper skin tone for each individual and changed and everything And if it doesn't, you can change it. So, so if we to move to detailed edit and we get something that's a little bit more like a portrait. Here, there we go, here. Oh, that'll work. Yep. We switch over to detailed edit. Here, maybe here. Or you know what? Let's go to a portrait. You want? Let's um, remove. It just, it, it, I mean, it'll work on these too, but I, when it's front and center, you start to see. Actually, you know, you this know will the work. problem. You know the problem? They don't see the original images anymore because they're, okay, there we okay, go. Okay, yeah. Uh, there, there so go. this is a thing, yeah. yeah. <laughs> because it, it makes you believe that you're such a good photographer every time you see the images <laughs> now. Yeah. It's like it's so perfect. Yeah, it, it loads so fast that if you yeah. don't have the split screen. Yeah, yeah. You, so if you go to detailed edit, you're going to see all of these tools and you're going to have more but what's interesting what's new is that third slider so you, you can you know collapse the tone there there's more tools obviously where is that i'm sorry oh, just a little arrow no which one which one am i supposed oh. to do so yeah scroll down to portrait uh, okay beta. let's take it tone out yeah there, so we there. can see this so this is where uh by default the auto detection is enabled um it does a pretty good job it's still constantly being trained but as you start to change that you can move that swatch around and it'll balance the entire scene around that skin tone. So what, uh, what took me so long to understand about this type of correction was when we were thinking about skin tone accuracy and, and, and that kind of underlying profile of skin tone is just important to balance the background with the foreground. So at first it was kind of weird for me to think like, well, this is skin tone slider, why is it doing it to the background? Because it's actually prioritizing the skin tones and then balancing them in. So that's the other thing. And when you start to just adjust the skin tone and not the background, you still have all of these other issues. So when you see this, it's a calibration. You're, it will now 
say to the AI, it's all communicating, the skin tone and the people are the subject and the most important thing we keep. Imagine that. So, and it's all, it'll do a pretty good job and you can always change it a little bit. It's, um, I can show you some advanced stuff. Yeah. You guys can build videos later, but it should be doing everything. And even if it gets the detection wrong, it's still good. When you tune it a little bit, it's so, such a subtle result that I'll just see more in shadows or highlights. To be honest, the thing that he's been saying, it's all about subtlety. But one thing I'm seeing is how consistent everything is. All the edits are just so consistent, straight out of this one. Plus, your exposure is corrected. So my With favorite thing, maintaining the highlights. That's that is a my thing. favorite. That are yeah, it's a it's a patented thing. It's the most I love that it was created. My favorite thing uh, that what we get as feedback is it actually does what it says it does. Yeah, which look is the that. weirdest thing to think about. Mm -hmm. Like software companies, like it actually does what it says it does is the nicest compliment. Okay, look at this one. Yeah, Here's what nice. I was saying about. Um, photographers still being in control because every time you're shooting something, you have to have a vision in mind, right? Now, the software did, did what it's supposed to do, right? Mm -hmm. However, if it were up to me with this particular one, I would still, make, I would still keep it warm. Oh, change it to uh, the people dark background. So this is... is people dark yeah, background? Yeah, and see if it... There we go. Okay. See? Yeah, so the reason is, is <laughs> scroll down a little bit now. See okay, where the color here? cast removal? This, there's there, a little there, arrow. There, yeah, there we go. Don't turn it off. Uh, the arrow to the right. Okay. So currently that's only in this and it didn't have to do this. It's an extra AI. So in the people dark background preset that triggers with there anything that's not a white background, you there can use go. it, uses an additional level of AI to fix that first. Wow. Because bounce light is different than cast light is different than light light, <laughs> right? Is different than infrared light. Are you guys seeing this? So if, uh, and this is like, all oh, right, please. Like you'll see on the tool, it says, you know, beta. Yeah. It's pretty much, I mean, it works. It's not buggy or anything, but we're still, we're, it, we're still tweaking it. So right mm. now, if you want to, you can enable the color cast removal by selecting the people dark background yeah. preset because it's not in the other ones yet. Do you see? That's amazing. But, so sometimes it won't detect a normal outside scene, it, but people's already pretty good. But if you want the absolute precision, you can say white background, light background, or yeah. dark, Same which works for it's any. Amazing. Yeah, it's that. really neat. I love how now everything change it to, so vibrant, then it's just go to people dark background. Yeah, click it. Then you got the color that you want, but look at how the image pops yeah. straight out of the camera already. Because now you're, it's like you're adding another layer of preservation and accuracy. This thing just saved me about five days editing these photos. Now change the exposure. Right? Okay. Watch the color. I don't even want to change it because <laughs> it's right already. Okay, so let's go for exposure. Where is exposure? See, I can't even find exposure anymore. You can, you can slide enhance forward a little bit more. Here, okay. Um, and then you can always add exposure on top. But if you, if you take that up. But then you're, you know how I love the subtlety of this thing? Like, no matter how much you push the slider, it just doesn't blow up. Everything is just so controlled. I always feel like we're doing this. It's our job to preserve the pixels. It's your job to destroy them. Oh. You know, because like we all we all destroy our photos in some yeah. way, right? Yeah. We, Whenever we, you're processing. Yeah, them, that's yeah. your style. Like yeah. I'm not saying okay. your style I'm, is I'm horrible. Gonna, yeah, I'm gonna I'm, remove this. I'm saying it no, should. It's what we do. Yeah. Innately, right? Okay. I mean, so how can I remove the images now? All of them. Um, can I press Command A and remove it, or just turn off the software and turn it on again and open it up? Again? You know what's so funny is. Um, my my partner does all the uh, <laughs> keyboard shortcuts, so, so like I, I know this is really unprofessional. I mean, just no, just like quit my open. So it's at fast least fast. you know it's a I, uh, you know it's a real thing yeah. that we're doing here, right? Yeah, it's yeah, not yeah, scripted. Yeah. So I, from I, here, yeah. now all your images, you know this. We've been doing a lot of talking, but technically all the edits were done already. The moment I imported them, yeah, and uh, it doesn't import. That's why it's open. It doesn't. Them. Yeah, it's just opening up the images. Then all I need to do is click save. Correct. Well, actually, if you do save all on the toggle, yeah, you can see one. not that one, but in the well, actually, yeah, yeah there, see the little toggle all. icon. If it's your first time, it'll bring up all the settings. Okay. It has a pretty robust batch edit uh, processing. There. So you can say same folder as original. It'll do a, a dot radian or a dash radian. And it saves us both a TIFF. TIFF file. Yeah, and what's cool, what we did here, output color space. A lot of people don't know what it is. Oh, Adobe so, RGB. Yeah, but watch, yeah. same as original or. So mm -hmm. you're, yeah. if you're not sure, yeah, okay. like read Same it first. And, yeah, yeah, so it helps you if, if you're not sure. All right, so all I have to do is export them and save. If you save, and uh, yeah. everything will be saved out, yeah. That's it. Okay, fantastic. Okay, now I want to open up 
Some you more can, images. Yeah, just open more images. Um, let's go to my favorite news course. My wife's images. You guys know Coco, right? And I shot her for the Sony demo. I used one light and all these images. And you notice it's taking a while because well, you've already loaded a I, bunch of yeah, stuff. Yeah, and I shot them. I shot them. I shot them with um, large raw. Yeah. So these are about seventy megapixels each. Is this with a CRW? Might not resolve it. No, these are ARW. ARW. Yeah. Okay. So if okay. the raw, if it's a new camera, remember right now it's it's this reading through R5. Apple. Okay. This is R5. So if Apple can't read it, we can't read it. No, it, it's being okay. Read. okay. Okay. So here is where. No, it's not reading it correctly. It's pixelated. No, I yeah. think it's because you're looking at. Not the, here. Oh, it, yeah. But it's, it's really it's, bad there. Yeah. Oh. yeah. Oh, okay. So it is reading. Okay. It oh, it so does look good there. Yeah, but here's the thing. This is where we have to teach the software. However, the software is doing it for us. But with photos like this, which is outdoor, the software knows automatically what's correct and what's not. Right. But it's not going to just say, read your mind and say, I yes. like darker. In yes. The back. Yeah. It's going to try Especially, to regulate it. So here you could see it, that what it's doing is that it's making everything properly exposed. So the, con the high contrast images, the software is reading it, as a dark spot, therefore it's removing the contrast. But look at the way it's removing the shadows and maintaining the highlights and the skin tone. Yeah, so all of this is, is changeable and customizable even before you add something like a vignette or a, a, yeah. a, a LUT or a color style. That is fantastic. And remember know. that, so you don't have to change the profile, but on the left side under Smart Presets, that's the default one called Pro. If you want a, a lighter back, all the way on the top, the whole menu there. Which one? This one? Okay. Yeah, so yeah. If just click on it. You'll see that there's this one that's subtle and then one that's finished. Those are different versions. So if you wanted, oh. a, if you wanted to start with a softer touch, that you have to click on it again. We're, we're still... We're there in <laughs> subtle, right? You can yeah. go to subtle, and now it's going to be a, a more subtle effect. Then people with dark background. There we go. And so it's going to assume that you want a little bit less, yeah. um, and then that's your starting point. But for the most part, it's, it's smart enough to treat every image differently. But okay. if you, you can save yourself a few seconds uh, at the beginning. Or what I can do, I'm pretty sure I could do it here, right? I could train, technically train the software for specific images like this so that I can set my own preset and say jiggy high contrast image. Yes, so the only difference between smart presets and presets is the auto detection. When you run something through these, yeah. it's trying to di differentiate it. But if you hit save, you save your own preset, All right. you can just apply it. So like, for example, in this particular image, if I want to maintain, let's say, the shadows here, what am I supposed to be um, touching in the smart editing? Uh, you could probably just pull the enhance down a little bit. Here, this one. Mm -hmm. And that's going to soften that up. Oh, yeah. There we go. Oh, yeah. That's like go. all the way. Yeah, that's all the way. But Exactly. So, so take that to about there. Yeah, well, there you go. About now, okay, so you've keep the structure there. Now you can always you can always make the changes uh, manually if you want to have or sharper sing highlights. Forward. Well, you can sing forward, but oh, there it did it did that. Yeah, <laughs> what's nice about this too is is you know the enhance is doing a lot of the work. Um, color is another layer that we turn off for skin tone because we start with that. But even see this, it's disabled for the auto detection. I also did yeah. that. So roll that slider a little bit more to the Here. right. Yeah, and That's watch fine. what it's it'll protect the shadows a little bit better. And you'll see this more if you move enhance up. But so Let's go back to this original. Yeah. So if you move it more towards the right, so a deeper shade, then it's going because her skin tone is a little deeper. It's going to know to like the structure of the shadows has yeah. to stay important. So yeah. this is the interesting thing about uh, the skin tone is it, it's not just a matter of the skin color. It's a matter of how the light interacts with it. Yes. So when you're telling it it's a it's a darker skin type, yes. it's a, accounting for these shadows being more important because when you adjust white skin and you adjust black skin, it's completely different. So you have sure. to, you, where, where that adjustment lives and has to yeah. maintain slides across the highlight and shadow spectrum. That's, that's actually the beautiful thing about this Isn't software. That neat? And, and I am a landscape yeah, photographer, guys. And and you know what? It. I'm so glad that Elias talking because I'm so mesmerized with what the software <laughs> is doing. And it's making me think on how I can make it my own because that's the whole point. Yeah. AI is not there to replace us. And that's why I'm doing this yeah. because I, it, we should all, all the models, all of us, we should all start with the yeah. revealing the natural beauty underneath yes. mm -hmm. accurately. Yes. Because then we can take it anywhere we want. But until today, in a consumer product, there hasn't been this. 
you know one thing I'm excited about with this one? Mm -hmm. All of a sudden, it doesn't take me to edit the photographs. I can it, make it, somebody else do it for me. Yeah. So long as they have a proper, um, proper understanding of color. And the, the, the sliders are so simple. All they need to do is tweak. It's very similar to your mobile yeah. phone, mm -hmm. which everyone's so used to. So with that, one, I really love how it's the balance of, you know how we, you do it in Photoshop, you have your curves adjustment layer, and you always bring down your shadows and you bring up your highlights to create the contrast? The software is actually doing it for you. Well, it's, it's, not, it's just not taking it away with an adjustment. It, yes. So there's no need to correct something if it doesn't change it first. Plus, it's not global. That's one it's, thing that I like. It's about absolutely it. like this is so geeky when I think about it that way. Like, yeah, of course you can always add contrast, but yeah. when you're making adjustments to light, it shouldn't be messing with the contrast Look anyway. That. Yes. Look at that. Yeah, it it'll is. it'll it does a really nice job. And sometimes like it so if the detection on auto detection isn't accurate. If you slide that all the way over to the lighter side, it's still going to look good, but yeah. you're going to see that now we're starting to reach into the lighter shadows. shades yes. and see how now I'm, I, I, when I say, oh, well, it corrects the background yeah, too. Yeah. Well, what do you mean? Now you see it has to balance a skin tone with the background yes. because it's not just about color. It's about the, how color changes. Yeah. And the AI knows if it's light, it knows if it's the tone, it knows if it's color cast. So this is where the, y you can appreciate this because you work in this field yeah. all the time. I've yeah. had to learn it. I've tested this. Oh, you're a landscape photographer. This, this I tool <laughs> every yeah. day for months. As you can see, I'm not saying anything. Every because, day yeah. for months. And I, 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 I yeah, asked. Here's the, here's the beautiful mm. thing about it. Nico, you're a landscape photographer, right? But of course, um, you might have a growing family. You, of course, you take pictures of your family also. And since you're for this in landscape photography, editing portraits is always going to be a problem. Yeah, yeah. With this particular software, you don't have any more exactly. problems. Exactly. Th that's what I was thinking about. It's, I always hate it when I process, for example, I'm on a trip, yes. right? And I shoot landscapes. And then we also take our portraits, yes. right? We, we take travel portraits. And I hate the fact that the automatic thing in my head is I would have to process it the same way as my landscape photos. Which you know you can't. Yeah. It, because it's going to be so different. The dynamic range for portraits is different yes. from what you're pulling in and pulling out for landscape is different for portraits. Precisely. But color is still something that I feel like no matter what the intention is, we would like to preserve. Of course, yes. of and course. And so that, that's where we have a commonality, and that's where I'm working with people like you yeah. and Jan Gonzalez, yes. like looking at these images and then seeing what you, like I've looked at before and afters, and I understand like th through these yeah. photographers what they're trying to correct, right? So then we can balance some of the presets and that, so it's it's been for me uh, fascinating and, and so cool to get to understand. It's what a you software do. developed by photographers who are actually yes. learning as a software develops. Yeah. We're, we're doing that's, that. Like, that's amazing. We're making right? it for us, really. Yes, yes. yes. <laughs> it's making life simpler because photography, as what we've always been trying to teach, starts off from taking a good picture. Take a good picture. You should spend less time editing. Yeah. However. The, with the limitations of the software, there's still a lot of manual input that we need to do with every particular software. In this particular case, you've got a virtual assistant. That's why it's AI. That's, it's yeah. an assistant. And if you think about your iPhone, like it, it's really not the the lenses are nice, the sensors nice, but yes. it's the software in between that's making yeah. that yes. happen. It's a processing. And, uh, actually, now that I'm thinking about it, you know how I would have um, editors in the office doing all this work for me, but they will do the initial color correction, then I will come in and approve or disapprove and tweak it a little bit. Final, final output is still on my hands. This basically replaces their job. Well, yes and so no. So you just put somebody out of a job. No, 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 <laughs> because then it's still, so yeah, we can, we can say this is, this is what you want her to, that's the balance that looks right, but now we can take that last bit. It shouldn't be the balance of light, it's the application of style. Yeah, and exactly. so that can be done with a LUT or a, a, a something but else that can... But that's on me. Yes. So no, I can it, develop that and save it here in the software too for me. You can get to yes. your look quicker. Yes, yes. Uh, but, but keep in mind that, it, no, we're not... Maybe we're replacing the need for that, but we're still going to need people to... When, if there's things to mitigate around glasses, there's still a reason for oh, th that's after people the to fact. process. That's after the fact. That's in Photoshop. No. Because this is for me. The I think first this, is, this is how it is. 
they're, you're not putting people out of a job. Yeah. It's basically you're stepping them up. Well, it, which is better? Solutions become very su- specific in tech. Yeah. Well, let's put it this way. As, as photographers, we want to be in control of everything that we're doing, especially with images that we create, correct? And if it's possible for me to automate everything that I'm doing, I would rather do that even if somebody else is doing it for me, but at least I am in control from start well, to you're, finish. You're also not putting anything on the cloud here. Yes. So I can take this take <laughs> note. <laughs> in the Philippines, we, we do what we call an, an on-the-day photo slideshow where we show about 160 to 180 images that my editor on the spot chooses and color corrects on the go. Can you just imagine if we had access to this particular software, everything will be done in an instant and I can give all the images to my clients that night. I can't talk about (laughs) how or who or what is gonna happen, but what I've learned is the more I use it, the more presets I'm making because we're starting to identify other things that we thought were editing first. And, And so it seems like, oh, it's gonna do everything for me and it will but you'll actually change as a photographer because you're gonna be able to look past all of this stuff. And it's amazing. Like I, I've learned more about my own photography by removing or simplifying things than I, I ever thought before. Because now I'm able to experiment. I'm able to, you know, I don't have all of these worries about things and it's just the beginning. Now you can be the one who's moving it forward. You know what you're gonna be teaching? Hmm. You're going to go back to the basics of photography. Yes, isn't that now fun? Er- yes. Let's <laughs> just get back in the field. Exactly. Like, just, just get out in the landscape. Yes. We don't want to have to edit everything one so, by one. So that we know that the moment we shoot that photograph, all I have to do is put it here, and the vision that we yeah. want will be there. Yeah, already. I mean, that's really the thing with landscape photography. Everybody says, I'd rather be out shooting. I don't want to edit exactly. every photo that's one true. by exactly. one. Exactly. I'm going to change some of this, but I And mean, you could shoot and edit and make the software do it on your phone immediately. We're working on making this. Yeah. Like, what, so? My hope is that, that it, so the way technology works is there's always that thing that's it's gonna outrun the problem and all that, but very, very quickly you're using things without knowing you're using them and yes. without that technology. Yes. Because what it's doing is it's sort of easing transitions into things. It's identifying things that don't need to be problems. So it's not identifying a big problem, it's recognizing the need where you can remove something from an equation that doesn't add value to it. Of course, yes. So this is the difference between what should be corrected versus what is or what makes most sense. This does this goes past that. I'm, I'm constantly thinking about, does it even make sense to have to think about this? Exactly. Is this photography? Exactly. Is this, you know, how do we overcome? The things like uh, skin tone tools like this that, that are for everybody, that needed to happen years and years oh, ago. But guys... This software will enhance what you create, but this software doesn't make you a better photographer. No. <laughs> it will just enhance whatever it is that you're creating. So do not depend on well, this software. Well, it will make you a better photographer because you won't have to worry about this. Oh, you'll be able to so spend time. Yeah. Yeah. It'll yes. give you confidence, yes. right? Which is the way I would, uh, I would always talk about gear when people would talk about gear. I go, gear is essential. Because the better your gear is, the simpler life will be for you, mm, which yeah. allows you to experiment more and go out and it shoot more. It allows you to That's focus it. more on being creative um, yes. instead of having and to think of every yes. single detail that you should. And have if it's to be hard, if, like it, it's easier now too, especially with traditional generations, yes. because they have a, they take cell phone photos, right? Mm-hmm. So maybe they have the iPhone. Maybe mm-hmm. you buy your mom the newest one. <laughs> yeah. But that's the thing. It's like, here's this camera. This is, this is what a, a photographer uses, but I wish it could always look like this. Yes. You know, so that, that's a desire. I think we have commonality. Mm-hmm. We just have to get you know, past this part and, and realize that this doesn't have to be photography. It doesn't have to be the thing, right? And when, if all the things are removed today, all the things that you think will, will replace or automate or whatever, you know what? In six months, there are gonna be a bunch of new things. To end this, that made no sense. Yeah, no. But to end <laughs> this, to end this particular video, I'm just gonna say one thing. I'm pretty sure you both will agree to this. Mm. Our edits are dependent on our mood. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Right. Yes. Yeah. Definitely. With this one, you take uh, take that out of the equation. We also all our see, colors are all gonna be the same. That's the thing. We all see a little bit magenta or cyan. Yeah. So this this goes past that. It goes yeah. past it. It's like there are times. Like, for example, you're editing in a different area, the colors will change. Oh, of course. We're under hot or, lights right yes, now. You don't or, want to be editing under hot lights. Or when you're tired, your yeah. colors will change. Yeah. The way you see things will change. This one will give you a more accurate baseline 
to where you're That's starting. That's the keyword. A more baseline. Ad, yes. Isn't it's science a baseline. cool? It yeah. is. It is. So <laughs> with that, a color. <laughs> thank you very much for your time, Elia. It was a pleasure meeting you, and I hope we do get to see each other again. Absolutely. And Nico, thank you very much. Of course, if you guys want to see more of what we talked about prior to this video, you can check out the video in Nico's channel. The link I will put in the description below. And was it, as what Elia said, we will also put the link in the description below where you could download this software and try it out for three, three months. months. Absolutely free. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video and thank you once again, Elia and Nico. My and do subscribe to the channel if you enjoyed it. And if you want to learn more about off-camera flash or maybe just photography in general, do check out the rest of the videos in my channel. And if you want to see some of the images that I've created, you can always find me in my social media sites, all at Jiggy Alejandrino. And of course, um, all your social media sites I'll put in the description below. If you spell my name and search, we'll find something. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah, I'm and, sure. And yeah. radiantimaginglabs.com yeah. oh, is where you can find you Radiant Photo or on the App Store, which is kind of cool to say. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Look, well, Mom, yeah. I made it <laughs> 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 All right. So thank you very much. And bye, guys. Sorry it was a long video, but I hope it was fun. Fantastic. This is so There's cool. There's potential there, right? right. This